Asians have a wheel of the year too. To be more specific, it's an agricultural calendar based on the moon phases, the lunar part, and the path of the sun, the solar part. So we call it the lunar solar or lunar solar calendar, Nongli. There are a total of 24 solar terms in this calendar system, and each term is ruled by three princely rulers. Kinda deacon ruler-ish, at least that's one way to conceptualize the three princely rulers. So 24 multiplied by three princes per term means there are a total of 72 princely rulers in this universe. These 72 princely rulers control various forms of disasters that can befall humans and Earth. But a ceremonial magician can learn how to thwart those disasters by learning how to negotiate and bargain with those 27, 27, those 72 princely rulers. Weird, huh? 72. The minds of Western occultists are exploding everywhere right about now. These 72 princely rulers are charted around a four-directional quadrant comprising of the two equinoxes and two solstices, whereby 18 princes rule over each of the four directions. When the solar longitude is 9 degrees around March 20th to 22, that's the vernal equinox. The vernal equinox Twinfin coincides with the second lunar month of the lunar calendar, the month of the rabbit. At around 15 degrees solar longitude and the number 15 is important to Eastern occultism, noting the Luoshu magic squares summing up to 15 in every direction, we enter the lunar month of the dragon and Qingmingjie, a major holiday festival when we honor our ancestors. These 24 solar terms are subdivided to eight seasonal terms corresponding with the ba gua or eight trigrams. So for example, back to the vernal equinox or point of Aries in Western astrology, the vernal equinox corresponds with the trigram thunder. The autumnal equinox or point of Libra corresponds with the trigram lake. The equinoxes are the only universally agreed upon correspondences. Traditions will then vary when it comes to the solstices. And whether the solstices, which one was which, corresponds with fire versus water. It flip-flops depending on who you ask, which magical system you're using, which bakwa arrangement, which um, trigram arrangement you're working with. And then because the solstices flip-flop depending on tradition or application, the other four seasonal terms also flip-flop. So let's talk about those main eight solar terms corresponding with the eight trigrams. These eight solar terms are the four equinoxes and solstices and what we call the four beginnings, si li. We begin with the start of spring, 314 to 315 degrees in terms of the solar longitude, lunar month of the tiger. This is Li Chun, early February, think in bulk or Groundhog Day, where it's not so much the start of seasonal spring as it is a time predictive of what type of spring is to come. So it's just before, it's the ending before the beginning. Then we have the start of another revolution of the sun with the vernal equinox around zero to one degree solar longitude, lunar month of the rabbit, Tuan Fun. The spring equinox is when we say there is a harmonious balance of yin yang, yin and yang in the universe. The vernal equinox in March is also known as the northward equinox because the sun, per a geocentric vantage point, appears to be crossing northward. Because of this observation of northward movement of the solar term, Historically, we venerated the god of the north. Sun cakes are often eaten in honor of the sun god as well for the strengthening of yang or yang energy in the summer months to come. If I am not mistaken, various Korean shamanic traditions also celebrate and venerate a north god during this seasonal term. Oh, and by the way, Kuan Yin's birthday is celebrated on the day after the vernal equinox. The start of summer happens around 44 to 45 degrees solar longitude. This is the lunar month of the snake. Li Sha. This solar term is 
Beltane-ish, occurring around May 20th in the Gregorian calendar, and is a fairly magically empowering time to ensure prosperity, abundance, and a safe, secure winter to come. The snake in my culture is representative of great magical power, wisdom, and high intellect. The coiled snake as a symbol is also associated with Fushi and Nuwa, the mythological primordial man and woman, or maybe-ish version of Adam and Eve-ish. Summer solstice is when the solar longitude is 90 degrees. This is the lunar month of the horse. Jia zi. The summer solstice marks the longest day in the northern hemisphere celebrated by a summer solstice festival. Xia zi jie. This time of the year coincides with the harvesting of wheats and grains. So historically, celebrations and festivities were centered on that agricultural event. The start of autumn happens around 134 to 135 degrees solar longitude, lunar month of the monkey. Li Chou. This is also Ghost Month. Even though we call it start of autumn, though, in the Gregorian calendar, we're talking about August. So it's still going to feel very summery. And this solar term happens to coincide with Lamas or Lugnasad. Please forgive if I mispronounce. And I'll forgive when you mispronounce Chinese. How's that? The autumn equinox, 181 degrees solar longitude, lunar month of the rooster. The autumn or September equinox is also known as the southward equinox because the sun appears to cross the celestial equator and head southbound. So this is when we celebrate the god of the south. In some regional traditions, it's a goddess. This is one final day in the calendar year when there is harmonious balance between yin yang, yin and yang, and after this, the balance tips toward the strength of yin. Start of winter, 225 degrees, give or take, solar longitude, lunar month of the boar or pig. This is Li Dong. Li Dong is really just before the season of winter or what feels like the season of winter begins to set in. And so it's that time when you begin to preserve, dry, and pickle the harvest from the year and store it away for the winter to come. You also want to begin to heat up the body to boost up your immune system so you can weather the winter to come. In preparation for the winter season, in terms of traditional Chinese medicine, the foods people will eat tend to feature more ginger and liquors or alcohols, more soups, sesame oil, chicken, duck, and so on, warm foods that, again, heat up the body. 270 to 271 degrees solar longitude, winter solstice. The winter solstice is when the north god is most empowered. So assuming you did everything right in terms of your prayers and veneration of the north god back during the vernal equinox, now is when the good tidings will manifest for you. The blessings of the north god and the blessings of your ancestors will come to be, mostly in the form of protection through the difficult seasonal winter months to come. Over the winter solstice, you really want to keep your body warm from a traditional Chinese medicine perspective with bone broth soups, daikon radish, radish cakes, a green leafy vegetable called tonghao, which often goes in hot pots. I don't really love it. Lamb hot pot, beef stews, longyan or dragon eyes, uh, hongzao, the red dates you sun dried just a few months prior, chestnuts to improve blood circulation, and also wood ear mushrooms, moor. You'll also see a lot of integration of pickled vegetables and rehydrating sun dried vegetables, which harkens back to the agricultural society. There are 24 solar terms marking equidistant points along the solar path or path of the sun. These solar terms can be subdivided into sets of three to mark eight important points coinciding with the eight trigrams of the Ba Gua, which we just covered. But the 24 solar terms are also marked in sets of two, the binary of yin and yang, to mark 12 seasonal points. Here's where we see a few other key holidays throughout the year that are important to Taoists and Buddhists. There's the well-known Lunar New Year, which is the first new moon of the calendar year. It's a time of lots of fireworks, lots of food, and if you're still unmarried, lots of red envelopes full of money. 
There's Qingjie, Tomb Sweeping Day, which we talked about earlier. This is the first day of the fifth solar term of the lunar month around early April when you visit the burial grounds of your ancestors. I covered Ghost Month already, which is the seventh lunar month of the lunar calendar. On the full moon, however, of the seventh lunar month, that's the Ghost Festival. From the midnight hour to the next midnight hour, this full moon is typically the 15th day of the lunar month, and again, that magical number 15. I think as it pertains to practitioners of the craft, discussion of Ghost Month and the Ghost Festival on the eve of the seventh full moon deserves its own video chat, so we'll table that. Then there's the Mid-Autumn Moon Festival, which is the full moon eve of the eighth month of the lunar calendar. Again, day 15. This is very, it's got Thanksgiving vibes to it. We celebrate Zang'er and we eat mooncakes. Fun numerology synchronicities. The sexagenary calendar, the oldest calendar system in East Asia, is a 60-year period. Each year is subdivided into the 24 solar terms, the lunar solar calendar. 60 times 24 means every period there are a total of 1,440 solar terms. There are 1,440 minutes in a day. The calendar cycle is 60 revolutions of the sun because of a permutational arrangement of 10 heavenly stems and 12 earthly branches. Each heavenly stem is paired with an earthly branch for 60 pairings, each binary pairing representing one revolution of the sun. There are a ton of numerological synchronicities in the lunar solar calendar and the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching with its six lines per hexagram for a total of 384 marks of change. Mathematically, 384 is a double factorial of eight, whereby all even, meaning yin and yang paired off in binaries, even integers, up to eight, two times four times six times eight equals 384. 3 plus 8 plus 4 theosophically adds up to the number 15, the magic Luoshu number 15. What's the significance? I don't know the answer to that. For me though, where there is mathematical precision, I intuit the presence of God or the Tao. Another fun fact, there's this fairly ancient Chinese lore that every eight cycles of the lunar solar 60 year cycle, basically every 500 years, give or take, a great philosopher sage will rise to mark a change of transition into a new era, a new age. Basically, it's the prophecy of a great sage that will come to the world every 500 years. I'll talk about that in my new book, I Ching the Oracle. So is all that really a Taoist Buddhist wheel of the year? I mean, yeah, sort of. Holidays celebrated in very similar ways with very similar themes on these designated days per the lunar solar agricultural calendar are found in Japan, Korea, all over China and mainland Southeast Asia, such as in Vietnam. Western imperialism and the Christianization of East Asia wiped a lot of these traditional holidays away. And just as what Christianization did to Western Europe and to the Americas, it did to Asia as well, where the historically significant celebration of the agricultural lunar solar calendar became pagan, when once upon a time, it was the norm. There is a reclamation movement taking place right now among East Asians who are trying to decolonize their culture. And if you're asking me, as an Asian American, that means honoring these historically and traditionally significant seasonal terms. If you're asking me, it means having to reclaim our lunar solar calendar, learning about it, knowing about it, and integrating it into our modern lives today. And for anyone at all who is interested in integrating Taoist mystical practices into their personal spirituality, one way to embrace this culture is to celebrate these holidays with us.